You guys are two of the blessed brothers in the whole city of Cleveland. <laughs> Amen. Amen. brothers is really y'all brothers are, are, are so blessed. And you know what I like to do, gentlemen, to get people to know about you know um, those that visit us here at KAZ, uh, uh, Prophet Brian Timberlake, is to give a testimony. So if you don't mind, share with our audience how you came to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, well, I've been in church all my life. Okay. Um, my grandmothers took me to church, uh, and I was fascinated with the things of church. So, uh, me being uh, fantasizing about the church and fascinated about it, I grew to want to know more about it. And so, uh, eventually, after being in church, praying, playing, uh, I heard the voice of God. Okay. Uh, I heard the voice of God through prophets, uh, through dreams. And, you know, my actions, other kids was choose to watch basketball. I chose to go to church. Okay. And so that's been my whole life story. Never went to the club, never drank, never smoked. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. So, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Come on, come on, come on, come on, Prophet Timberlake. You never had a drink? Never, never had a drink. Smoke some weed? Never smoked weed, never. Had a cigarette? Never had a cigarette. Never. Wow. Never. Wow. Nope. I never did none of those things, man. I, um. Uh, I mean, you know, I got some other stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's another thing. Yeah, because 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 I mean, you are you are you're a wonderful pastor, and I guess you can relate to to folks without having to indulge in what they indulge in to know the the, the dangers and the consequences oh, yeah. that 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 can come along with those yeah. kind of actions. I grew up in a neighborhood where uh, drugs were being sold. Um, my friends were smoking and drinking. So, uh, the good thing is I didn't have to deal with peer pressure. Okay. Uh, my friends, they they wouldn't allow. You know, all they knew was priests. So my friends said, if we gonna die and go to hell, we need you to be a priest and so baptize. <laughs> Amen. And that's been their story. Amen. <laughs> that was the, that's, Amen. How, that's what kept me. Amen. And then, so connect the dots for us. How did you go from, you know, you know, serving in the church, to finding that you had a prophetic call on your life? Um. Uh, well, yeah, that was a big transition. Even still now dealing with that, um, as you read scriptures and you can relate, uh, I know um, Isaiah and Ezekiel are two of my favorite prophets, and I go through that uh, Ezekiel moment where, you know, you have to, uh, that depressed state or that state where it's just like, God, why am I alone type thing. Uh, and then you have the moments where it's like, God, uh, why am I different? Right, right. Uh, why can't I relate to everybody else? Why can't I do what everybody else is doing? And so um, that's when he started showing me the prophetic gifting. Um, started with a prayer life. Okay. Um, I thank God. At the, I believe at the age of eight, I started praying. Um, okay. And if you ever study the prophetic or anything about it, most prophets start off with a prayer life. You have to be an intercessor if you want to be titled a prophet or anything like that. Okay. And uh, with the guidance of my apostle, um, Apostle Dotson, and his instructions and leadership. Uh, that's how we kind of got them pieces together, and uh, I got that title through them. So. Amen. Yeah, Apostle Dots, a good friend. He's been on KZ uh, several times. Uh, shared his ministry, and we got to get him back here. But he's been so busy in the boxing arena Definitely. that we got to pull him away if possible Definitely. and let him share some more of his Hebraic uh, theology uh, with our listening audience. So you got a gentleman sitting here beside you. What, why is he here? Well, what's going on in, in the city of Cleveland? Well, um, Pastor Scales was so gracious enough to finally invite me to uh, Greater Works for the uh, Ignite My Fire Youth Service, um, which we're definitely excited about. And um, we don't take calls lightly when we get them, especially from giants like that. Uh, right. Giants like a po uh, apostle, pastor, prophet, skills. Yeah, bishop so, skills. Bishop yeah, skills. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh huh. So yeah. So now, um, my my dear friend and 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 cousin, uh, Pastor Scales, tell us about this uh, the, the, this the special service that you're having uh, at your church. We're having a special youth service uh, this this Sunday, the twenty seventh, at our eleven thirty service, okay. as well as our five p.m. service, and it's just. As it says, to ignite a fire in our youth. Uh, I believe the call is really unique and the timing is really good. Uh, seeing what's happening in the news with our youth, 
uh, killing each other, uh, babies getting killed, uh, that we can have a place where they can uh, learn about and, and have exposure to the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, so that's why this call is so important. This, this, this service is so important just to have something uh, to, to inspire them uh, during this time in, in, in our city of Cleveland right now and have a place where we can come together and, and fellowship, come together and pray, come, and, come together and get built up in the word of God. I know that the prophet going to bring a powerful word for the youth and for uh, someone they can relate to that's, that's, that's around their age right, right. and that's going to bring this fervor and bring this fire because uh, I know the Lord is going to use him to, tremendously at the church. And you know, um, you know prophet, uh, you know, you know, something that concerns me, and maybe you can help me with this, okay? Prophets of old would give warning. Mm -hmm. You know, but besides exhortation, they would definitely give warning. I mean, that was one of the the main cruxes of a, of a prophet. They could give you a warning. Has there been a cry? Has there been a warning? Has there been... A, a a a proclamation about what is happening in our city today. Well, sadly, uh, I haven't heard any, um, and I'm using the arena as a lot of prophets that we flock to. Um, as I read, you read Jeremiah, you read Ezekiel, you read uh, Isaiah. Those prophets was not welcomed that much. Yeah. Um, even if you look at Isaiah, uh, starting with the first chapter all the way to. The 40th chapter, yeah. Isaiah's words was harsh. And then finally he flipped the screen on them. And after the 40th chapter, he starts giving us those, uh, thus said the Lord, he's going to do it. A uh, brighter day is coming. Uh, uh, no, things like that. But um, I believe a lot of people get caught up into the houses and cars and uh, they want their right now prophesied. And they don't believe that there is a future. And as a prophet, it's our job to. Not just prophesy, build. You know, we understand prophecy is edifying, encouraging, building up. But also give that warning. You know, thus says the Lord, if you do not do this, this is going to happen. You know, and we got a lot of prophets that just prophesy this is coming, but with no instructions. Uh, we cannot prophesy. We cannot give the word of the Lord without instructions because God is instructions. And if we're going, like even, you know, today's time, nobody's prophesying that. You know, we have a lot of, I see God giving you a new house. I see God giving you a new building. I see God, but nobody is seeing that we're living in the end times and stuff is being uh, shown daily mm -hmm. that our kids is being taken out of here as mm -hmm. warning signs. No prophet is standing up and saying we have we have more women standing in the man's place than we do the men. Uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> and I don't hear any prophet say anything about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and, it, and, and, and they're not bashing women. Right, right. Women have to. Somebody got to do the job. Right. You know and. I believe what's going on now, uh, if we was to prophesy, I believe what's going on, God is trying to get our attention as brothers in Christ, as men in Christ, not just to have a night my fire service, just to have a service, because we've been doing that. But we have to, we understand we can't reach them all, but we can reach one who can reach somebody who can reach somebody. That's great. And that's what we have to do. Well, you know, I I, I, I totally agree with you. And, 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 and I wish, you know, not wish, but, man, if God had called me to be a prophet, you know, I would be one of those sounding the shofar, shouting the horn, letting us know as a people that we are heading towards destruction. Definitely. I mean, we are are heading towards destruction. Pastor Scales, your church is is located in a in a in in a in, a, in I guess uptown inner city area, um, off of Lee Road, uh, not too far from Shaker Heights, but uh, right there near Harvard. And there's been some killings and, and things of, of that nature. Um, what are you doing to to comfort uh, your your members uh, with with this violence? Are you are you addressing it at all? Have you addressed it at all? We've addressed it, and uh, and we've. Oh man, we've been very, I mean, prayerful about just everything that's going on right now, because it seems like every time you, you you see the news or turn on social media, you find that out about a new uh, killing that then took place. Right. And you know that can kind of bother people and, and even mess with their hope. Uh, and and some uh, one of our members even on yesterday, uh, because she has a son that's three years old, she don't even want to take her son out of the house. Wow. After the three year old baby got killed. Wow. Uh, so, you know, right now it's just a time of us just encouraging them, number one, through the word of God. 
uh, number two through prayer and just having it uh, things available to 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 keep them uh, encouraged as they're coming to church and as they're uh, you know fellowship and one another like we're doing even with this service that uh, bring allow them to come in and just just get their mind off of what's going on right, right. so to speak uh, in the world when they come into the church now as as a pastor uh, your ministry also has a prophet in your house absolutely tell us about uh, the prophet that's in your house um, my wife uh, prophetess Renee skills and uh, awesome awesome uh, in the in the gift of the prophetic and also in teaching uh, She's she's dynamic, man. Uh, <laughs> if I get to talking about her, we mess this whole show up. No, we won't. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she she started a school of the prophet. Absolutely, yeah. She started a school of the prophet in our church, and they meet uh, once once a month on the third Saturday of the month from twelve thirty uh, to three p.m. And uh, she just does a phenomenal teaching. Uh, that, that breaks down what is a prophet, what is the call, uh, the prophet's prayer life, uh, and just different things uh, to get people an understanding about, a, about the prophetic. Everybody's not called to be a prophet, uh, but she gives understanding of, about the whole uh, prophetic move or the prophetic ministry uh, that people can be more uh, 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 informed about it. The Bible says that my people perish because of a lack of knowledge, so she gives uh, a thorough teaching and understanding uh, what it is uh, when it comes to uh, the prophetic, and I love it. Amen, amen. Now, 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 Prophet Timberlake, in your church, are you raising up prophets as well? Definitely. Um, our prophets, uh, I was taught to look at the one who have the, the intercessor, the prayer life. Uh, most prophets begin to prophesy through their prayers. Through okay. Their life. Okay. And so uh, we have one, um, and you know we only six months old. So. Oh, okay. Uh, a lot of stuff is just. Amen. Uh, I'm doing everything right now, but in the midst of doing everything, um, we're teaching, and in order to allow them to exercise their gift, we have to give an opportunity for them to do so, and that way I can be able to correct them, uh, show them what was wrong, what wasn't wrong. You know, things of that nature. So, well, let's talk about something on the lighter side. What about family? Married? Yeah, I'm married. Oh, I'm, yeah? I've been married for five years now. Five, five years? Five years. How yeah. is the married life of a man of God? Um, it's, uh, to, to be honest, uh, it's, it's a wonderful thing. Amen. Um, first, I had to realize, though, you know, because I married a, I married a woman, does not necessarily mean that when I married her, she was prepared to be a wife. Mm. And so uh, I believe as a man, our job is to find the wife. I found the woman, but I will not. Uh, in, in order for me to find the wife, I have to marry her. But I have to see attributes of a wife in her. Right. So I've seen the attributes. And there is my job as the priest, the prophet in my home. As she begins to submit, it's my job to cultivate her. <gasps> You use the word submit on the air? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you know, uh, uh, my, we have an understanding. You know, of amen, course, amen. even in six months, we had people come to our church and tell my wife that uh, I was holding her back. Um, they see depression on her and blase, blase, blase. Uh, my wife is everything I pray for um, in a woman, you know. And so with that being said, we understood that those words was off because most people that come to your church, right. especially, and, and, and I love, I love women preachers flat out. Right, if you right. want to preach, I, I, I will flock to you. I will go mm. follow if you're under God. Um, but me and my wife relationship, it flows for our house. And so most people will see, see us resemble another house, but just because we resemble another house does not mean we flow like that house flow. Okay. okay. And so when it comes to submit, it's not a bash thing. It's not a, she submit, I submit. Right. Oh, of course. And, and see, the, and the reason I, I added that, the, the prophetic and pastoral part in there, is because it's not an everyday relationship. Because I'm assuming that you, are you her pastor? Yes. She goes to your church? Yes. Definitely. And so, uh, Pastor Scale, you've been married a long time. Uh, you, you, you understand where she looks at you as a husband. Amen. But she also looks at you as... Her man of God, Definitely. the priest of the home, and and out, and I think that is such a a, a, a a maturing that needs to take place for that to happen. Because I was always told that if you want to see how how things are going on at home on Sunday, look at the first lady. Definitely. 
Mm-hmm. Okay? And if the first lady isn't cheering on the pastor, you know, then something must be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> something must be wrong. Am I right? I've heard Am it I too. <laughs> That's what I heard. I've heard it too. <laughs> so, you know, it's, 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 it's a good thing. Uh, and then, of course, you're new, you're new at this. Too so, there's going to be some ups and some downs and 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 some gelling together. But I think the bottom line is the wife. They basically run it. Oh yeah, yeah. They basically run it. <laughs> you know, I mean, we run it in our in our churches and in our ministries and in our businesses and stuff like that. But when it comes to coming home, bang, they run it. Yeah. You, you run it. Am I right, Pastor? Come home and submit. You come home and submit. <laughs> 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 you heard that right now? You come home with some minutes. I'm about to give her a call and make sure that's the fact. But, but Pastor Scale has a unique situation. He has all daughters in his house, along with the wife. So I know he really wow. has to submit. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> he has to submit. But things must be going good because we used to go out and watch basketball and football. I ain't heard from him for a while. So, <laughs> so, so he must got another buddy or somebody he's hanging with. <laughs> But, but, but getting back to the church, um, what do you think, uh, men, and, and, and just either one of you, or both of you can answer this, um, what can the church, what does the church need to take it to the next dimension? So that when people walk in, there's healing and there's deliverance and there's just the glory of God. I mean, it, it is so glorious that every time you walk into a church, God's glory is there and his healing and his presence and his deliverance. How can we reach such a, 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 a magnificent church like that? What do we need to do? I'm going to let the bishop go ahead and answer it. I believe uh, well, number one, that requires uh, that requires a, a uh, prayer life it requires operating in faith and also tapping into the supernatural uh, it's things that they can see that we can naturally do and show forth our excellence in the church uh, see a, a clean place to worship in a nice uh, facility uh, people that's operating in excellence uh, but it's also uh, past that when people are coming in and go past that and receive uh, the word of God to receive uh, and, and be a part of the worship and then God becomes mm. more real to them uh, I believe that what we need to see more of is the supernatural mm. as, as people coming in because of teaching because of worship because of excellence because of order uh, that God shows up and do some 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 tremendous things. I believe uh, churches need to to experience the, the the church of the old, where they come in and and deaf and, and deaf ears open up, come, on, come in with blinded eyes and blinded eyes open right, up. Right, right. I believe that you know we shouldn't have a section, and I, and I'm not bashing any church to have a section where uh, where people are deaf and they. Uh, 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 do sign language. Mm-hmm. I believe that in the supernatural church, they need to come to the altor come and on. get them ears open, and then they can go back and sit and receive come the on. message come because now they can hear. Amen. So Amen. that's I believe you know that's what we need to be exposed more of. God, God just uh, in the church is just having a supernatural manifestation of healings and 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 things of that nature, deliverances. Uh, last Sunday, yesterday, actually, actually, I taught two weeks a series on. Uh, the power of the Holy Spirit, and as I began wow. to teach on the power of the Holy Spirit, uh, made an altar call for people to be filled with the Holy Holy Spirit. Altar call, uh, the the altar was full, uh, and instantaneously people was receiving uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Wow! Uh, people that had been waiting for years and been wanting this gift for years came in on yesterday. And I'm telling you, within minutes, within moments, was filled with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of, of speaking in tongue. Uh, and, and things like that happen, that's happening supernaturally. Uh, people can't forget about that. Amen. You know, Amen. and people get exposed to that, exposed to the things of God like that. Now there's an excitement in them because that's something that's never happened to them right, before. Right, right. And, and, and in your church, I do know for a fact, you, you are one to um, have those type of altar calls, where, where, where people get slain in the spirit, mm-hmm. where people get delivered, where people get baptized in the Holy Ghost. Mm-hmm. Um, that's sort of a, a tradition with you that you've kept. 
Amen. For for many many years, um, over where you're at, do you do the same thing, or how is your services different? Oh, definitely, uh, we do the same thing. Um, I'm more so. I, I'm I like to say we we're the type of church where we deal we deal with it. Um, uh, Ezekiel talked about the works of the flesh are, and in order for us to uh, get you into the spirit, I have to deal with your flesh. Yes, and we have a lot of people come in, uh, let's use this the homosexual thing for instance Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is just a piece of the message for Sunday in order for me to deal with you being homosexual and I want to cast out a demon, I have to first deal with the generation, what kind of generation is it someone have to be honest and we have a lot of people to come in and say well why am I like this why do I deal like this and so it comes from uh, Psalms 107 tells us, Psalms 106 talks about how the generation of gen- four generations down have dealt with these things, but nobody's being honest. Mm-hmm. And so in our ministry, we, we want to be honest. And in order for us to see miracle signs and wonders, you have to first be honest with yourself. Is so, this what you really want? Or do you want to stay handicapped so you can receive that check? So, so do most homosexuals that, that come to the church, do they feel they ha- that, that there's a problem with it? Or, or are they comfortable with the homosexuality? Uh, let's, the ones with the Holy Ghost have conviction. Okay. Let's use that. You know? Okay. Uh, and I know that may be far-fetched for a lot of people, but uh, because they dib and dab in their, their sin, right. does not mean uh, they don't have the Holy Ghost. They just don't know how to refrain from doing what they're doing. Right. And number one starts with they're not accountable to anyone. So you make someone accountable... And then we outside, uh, we can pray, we can do all those kind of things, but let's deal with the physical, then let's deal with the mental, then let's go to the spiritual and build you up from there. Amen, amen. And and that is something that, that the churches are, are dealing with. Um, getting back to ignite the fire. Um, now, y- you say this is, this is mainly for... The, the the youth pastor is that what this is for uh, a prophet or is it for anyone can come anyone can come most definitely okay yeah because you said all are welcome mm-hmm. free food will be served uh oh after our morning service and refreshments in the evening who's doing the cooking yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, we actually <laughs> we actually for this this particular event uh, we have a, uh, a a a new member actually in the church uh, that's been with us just for a few months now. Uh, uh, Prophetess Brenda, she's actually uh, the one that coordinated this and, and helped put this together and uh, even uh, contacted uh, the prophet for us and all of those things. Amen. And she's actually going to be the one uh, catering it as well. We got a lot of great cooks in the ministry, but she says she's going to handle it. Oh, amen. Uh, so uh, wow. we, we're looking forward to uh, some good eating, uh, some great spiritual food, number one. And there's some natural food we're gonna fellowship uh, afterwards. Amen. Yeah. amen. And, and, and 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 what are the hours of that again? Uh, at eleven thirty Sunday morning and five PM Sunday evening. And we're gonna eat afterwards. We're gonna eat twice. We're gonna eat the word of God and it's for our spirit. And we're gonna eat natural food. Have light refreshing refreshments in the evening. Oh man, that, that means you'll be eating four times four times. Yeah, four times. Oh You're right. <laughs> and that address is three nine one four Lee Road, right there on the corner of Biltmore and Lee. Yes, sir. Greater Works Revival Center. And if you need to get revived, if you need to have your fire ignited or reignited, Amen. come out Sunday, September the twenty seventh, between eleven thirty and five. Well, man, gentlemen, I am so blessed to have had you, you you all here. It's been like pulling teeth to get Dr. Scales in the house. <laughs> but see, he, he finally decided to come through because he knew Prophet Timberlake was coming through. So <laughs> he said, I, I, I'll be safe with, with the Prophet in the house. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll be safe with the Prophet in the house. Um, any final words for the young people who, who uh, aspire to become a prophet can they aspire to such a calling and if so what is your advice to them uh, stay stay humble stay submitted uh, stay teachable Amen. because a lot of people uh, desire to do the work but they can't stand the fire okay and that's why we have to keep if we have to keep reading not in that fire something is wrong mm-hmm. uh, you're not you're not sitting at someone's feet even not with passion I sit at the feet right. still to this day. Right. Uh, I just just because I'm passionate doesn't mean 
we talk on a regular no I still go I still serve service like I'm just the regular house profit still right. do what I normally do and and you're accountable yes definitely have to be yeah you're, every you're, profit is accountable to a profit amen amen and then and you're a prophet of uh, uh pastor uh, apostle apostle Dawson. Uh, apostle yes, Dawson. okay amen and, and and pastor scales to the young ministry out there that that wants to aspire to you know do what you've been doing for how many years now oh my god 14 years pastoring 14 years pastoring yeah. uh-huh. um got over the a lot of hurdles mm-hmm. um what would be your advice to that young pastor that feels like uh, giving up well uh, like you say you have to have uh number one a pastor to to to, to hold you accountable I believe you know God ain't, have not called any of us to be long rangers uh, in ministry right. uh, so uh, when you have a pastor uh, that you're accountable to and can uh, pour into you then he can he can kind of gauge you as well let you know you know you, you, you're getting close to burnout <laughs> right you know right, right. and let you know that you know maybe you need to take two weeks off right. take a week where you can get refreshed Amen. and you can go somewhere and get poured into the word of God and number two, you may need to take a vacation with your wife and allow right. both of you all to get refreshed right. so it's no burnout. You know, we just got to be careful because constantly in ministry, we get pulled on all the time. All the time. We get pulled on. We praying for folk. We encouraging folk. And sometimes we go home like David and we have to encourage ourselves Amen. in the Lord after we've been their superhero. Right, right, right. Exactly. <laughs> we come home like Clark Kent. <laughs> <laughs> right. exactly. Amen. Exactly. Uh, if you don't mind, I want to share sure. too. Just uh, it's not going to only just be uh, uh, preaching at this event. At these event, we also going to have uh, different things because the Bible says the uh, use the uh, foolish things of the world to to confound the wise. We're going to have uh, praise dance. We're going to have uh, uh, spoken word. Uh, there's going to also be a Christian rapper there. Uh, we're going to have some tremendous things going on. Uh, to get their attention and really, uh, uh, and we ask the, the audience that's watching this to be in prayer for us because we believe in God for souls to be saved. Uh, we believe in God for, for lives to be changed, that they can be so on fire that they leave out telling everybody about Jesus after this event. So I just want to make sure I, I share that. I know he's going to bring the word, but it's going to be also some other uh, f- f- uh, dynamite things going on as well Amen. to get their attention. It's going to be rap. Oh yeah! Oh, oh yeah. my! Oh yeah! Crazy rap, and, and, and it's gonna be poetry, open poetry. Yeah. So you yeah. people can come up and give a poetry. Thing? No, it's not gonna be open. Oh, it's gonna be open. Let me be careful. I'll repeat. It will not be open. I'm about to get up in there, man. Roses are red, violets are blue. You know. Okay, so for folks, it won't be open poetry. But there will be be poetry. It's going to be a great time over at the Greater Works Revival Center. None other than my main man <laughs> and first and pastor Renee and Pastor Ernest Scales, along with my new friend Prophet Brian Timberlake. So we look forward to having you guys back on KAZ. Oh yeah! Looking forward to sharing it again uh, when you got something coming up. You're never strangers here. You're always welcome. Hey, Amen. Thank you. We okay. thank you for this. And thank you for the opportunity. And yes, for sir. those of you out there that don't know Jesus Christ, let me tell you something. You can get to know Jesus right now, or you can get to know Jesus on September 27th. <laughs> All you have to do is confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord. And you got to really believe that not only did he live, but he died and he rose again just for you. So this is your online apostle, Larry James, signing off. Good job, guys. Was it good? Was it that bad, cuz? That shit brought it top. <laughs>